part two of this three-part series, we are going to examine the early formations of the discipline of future studies leading up to the impact of the world wars and the emergence of planning at a national level. One of the distinctions between the ancient and the contemporary is the awareness of our ability to impact on the life support system of the planet. You might have heard the term Anthropocene mentioned in regards to climate change. The term Anthropocene refers to the current geological age viewed as the period during which humans have been the dominant force impacting on the planet. There is not yet a consensus on when the Anthropocene begins. Some use the Neolithic agricultural revolution from 12 to 15,000 years ago as the starting point. Others refer to the Industrial Revolution and the Age of Steam, and there are some who refer to the Trinity Nuclear Test as the start of the Anthropocene. The Trinity Test was the first detonation of a nuclear weapon by the United States Army on July 16, 1945, as part of the Manhattan Project in the Jornada del Muerto Desert in New Mexico. The important thing, argues Wendell Bell, is that we have developed a sense that the planet and its ecology has been changed and even diminished by human actions. Increasingly, people are coming to realize that they must take responsibility for the future, both for their own individual futures and collectively for the shared future of all humankind. Such people seek the knowledge and wisdom to speak for the well-being of future generations, including those in the far future hundreds or thousands of years hence. The Foundation of Future Studies is a two-volume work in which Bell charts the influences and directions that future studies has taken over the last century and beyond. Futures Studies, as I mentioned in the previous video, is also known as Futurology, and it is a branch of the social sciences sharing much in common with history, but focusing on the study of the possible the probable and the preferable futures. The key to futures studies as an academic discipline is the systematic approach to examining the patterns of the past and present in order to anticipate the possibility and potential of future events and trends. What I hope for students in BCM325 Future Cultures is for you to get a sense of the role of the media and communication industries, technologies and practices in the futures of futures studies. And we will be making connection to those in this and further videos to come. Futurology has the same impulse as the art of divination and prediction, but it draws on the methods of the social sciences, economics, philosophy, politics, and so on, in order to seek out the values and ways of being that will lead to the flourishing of human society for everyone. Modern futures studies, argues Bell, is a continuation of the futurological quest to understand the world and to make a good life in it. Bell admits that futures studies is often done badly, but at its core, it is about taking part in the conscious decision to act. Futures Studies recognizes that its methods contain an element of uncertainty, but that is a result of not being able to possess or interpret all information all of the time. Futures Studies is not omniscient. Futures Studies seeks to make the future better, not just preparing for the worse, but ensuring that we make the things happen that we want to happen and stop the things that we don't with the full knowledge that things may not turn out as we plan. This is why the creative industries are so important to future studies. It is through our experience with media texts and communication practices that we shape our plans for the future. It is through our consumption of mediated fact and fiction and through the communication of our creative works that we express our ideas about the patterns of the past and the potential of the future. It is through our movies, books, comics, games and even our Instagram posts that we imagine what life could be like. It is through news and media that we consume narratives about both the ancient and the new, and we begin to understand that our actions have positive and negative consequences. The communication industries, not just science fiction, but all genres and formats, help us to understand what courses of action are available, and helps us to imagine what we want the futures to be. The seeds of futures studies were planted in the disastrous human cost of World War I 
28th of July 1914 to the 11th of November 1918, one of the bloodiest and most devastating conflicts in human history, and the global economic crisis, typically dated between 1929 and 1939, which followed World War I. Those seeds take hold during World War II, as events required that national leaders make plans, formulate policies, and design blueprints for the future, which took into account the new technologies, global alliances, and geopolitical tensions that had developed. Planning is as old as humanity, argues Bell, from scheduling hunting parties to the shepherding of animals and the rotation of crops. But as the complexity of society increases in the nuclear era of post-World War II, the complexity of planning also increases. Before 1914, the biggest planners were generals and military strategists. But following World War I, the non-military leaders of governments began planning aspects of national economies, social services, health, education, energy, agriculture, and the security of borders. World War I had a massive impact on the need for organizational capabilities, which established the groundwork for futures thinking. The Great Depression in the interwar years strengthened the resolve to regulate the economy in the United States, and President Franklin Roosevelt enacted the New Deal, which was a series of programs and reforms of federally governed economic and social engineering. Bell sees this kind of response to the Great Depression as the formation of the rudimentary elements of future studies, which includes analysis and interpretation of the recent past and present, projections of future developments with and without interventions, descriptions of possible alternative actions and possible futures, evaluation of desirability of alternative futures, Selection of specific policies to implement for desirable futures. Bell argues that the rise of communist Russia was an important contributor to the advancement of futures thinking in the administration and management of the nation state. The Bolsheviks created some of the first planning organizations, including the State Commission for the Electrification of Russia in 1920, and demonstrated a serious political commitment to planning. Planning for the revolutionaries was an experiment that was worked out by trial and error, which eventually developed into a system of long-range, 10 years, medium-range, 5 years, and short-range, 1 to 1 and a quarter years. The past is not a guide to the future. The past can be transcended. Conscious decisions and efforts to achieve great purpose can shape the future. Following the first decade of planning, the Soviet Union transformed itself into a great power, an industrial nation rivaling the advanced capitalist economies, but with greatly low levels of living standards, an inefficient agricultural sector, and social terror used as an economic weapon with brutal repression. That's where we're going to pause and conclude part two of this three-part series.